this guy right here just like a three and a half year old um probably 165 pound buck this next one has a million something views on the interwebs <laughs> if i remember correctly the, the smallest one of the season has the most <laughs> views <laughs> kind of a squiggly buck but he's just a big four point this is Maine. This buck right here, got him officially scored the other day. Uh, he's 128 inches. He was killed out on an island. He's just a really cool deer. He's got blading, he's got swooping, his beams. This one looks longer, but they're identical in length, which is really cool. So this was the second to last one of the season. So this was a random buck that I saw basically in a field probably a week before chasing a doe. He was on public land for new hampshire that's like a stud of a deer he's like 22 inches outside and i think he's 19 or 20 inside this is moose that's what i call him for obvious reasons he's got palmated brow tines on both sides he's got a double brow tine here it almost looks like a second main beam he's got palmation which is something i've always wanted i knew about this deer it had about 400 trail camera pictures the most trail mm -hmm. camera pictures i've ever had of a deer God, have you talked to anybody about this most recent buck the video is coming out this weekend but this is the first time i've talked to anyone about it yeah can they hand them over to you and you can talk us through them you can hold them. You haven't held them yet, so. <laughs> From some of the photos, I'm like, people aren't going to see the justice of, like, this. But when you see the time length, like, just over 12-inch G2s, 26-and-a-half-inch main beam on this side, 11-inch um, G3s, 4- or 5-inch G4s. Like, <laughs> he's just... The only thing that didn't make him a booner was the the uh, scorer said was the brow tines. New England is home to some of the most iconic hunting, fishing, and conservation opportunities in the world. Striped bass, whitetails in the big woods and suburbs, native brook trout, Maine moose, and the list goes on. Alongside these opportunities is a world-class, local-driven outdoor industry that is honed into the unique needs of New England hunting and angling. The Hunt Fish New England podcast brings you the men, women, and lore behind this region's incredible outdoor industry. This is hunting. This is fishing. This is New England. I know you got the back thing going on. Oh, you're good. <laughs> Kyle, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy, dude. I, I don't even know. Um, well, we're going to title this episode part two of the New England Slam. And um, I don't even have the words to describe it. This is extremely impressive and motivating. And I don't know anybody else who's done this in a single season. Yeah, I, I'm sure there's people that have done it that aren't on social media, but I... I don't yeah there's no words um, <laughs> by the time this probably comes out I can uh, say it I'm gonna do like a giveaway based on guessing the inches the amount but it was like 747 for six deer so pretty pretty crazy and I don't even know how many pounds of meat that is I donated two of them to like the hunters for the hungry stuff oh right on um, into like a soup kitchen but the rest is in my belly or upstairs and stuff so. <laughs> yeah i saw you're giving some to the neighbors too yeah yep. right on he had never had it so figured i'd let him try it <laughs> right on all right um i think we should look at each deer and you can um i say we i say we do this let's just do one at a time real quick the in order from from kills these are all in order no they're not all right let's let's just start down here you can just tell us the the state okay and uh general time period you got it and uh means of take okay so i'm gonna uh hand it over to you awesome do you want me to like pick them up yeah pick okay. them up i don't know which camera you want me to face it no. so this guy right here just like a three and a half year old um probably 165 pound buck um so this guy right here was my first ever rifle buck um i don't gun hunt i mostly bow hunt so 
this guy right here was, let's see, November 11th, I think. Yeah, so it was like the second day of gun season. Yeah, because I had to check it in still in person. So um, that was this buck. It was pretty much the worst muzzleloader season ever. It was my first year muzzleloader hunting, and um, I saw one buck the entire muzzleloader season in New Hampshire. And uh, so that was a New Hampshire buck. Um, I literally tried every tactic in the book, and I just tried to move around a lot and still hunt. Um, and obviously we didn't have snow, so I couldn't track and nothing was working. I literally got so down. I wanted to quit. Um, and yeah, it was just super frustrating. I, <laughs> it, when you were out there in the freezing rain with like no gloves on, cause you don't want to ruin your shot was my thought. Mm -hmm. So my hands are freezing. I had some hand warmers, but it, uh, that was probably the most miserable I've been for a deer. And then it just went from like really bad to or like really bad to good. Yeah. Um, I actually saw him sparring with a little buck, which is one of the coolest things I've done, like seen. And then in the big woods, it's impossible to see more than normally 40 yards. Um, but I was on a swamp edge set up on the ground. So I propped up my climber <laughs> with for the rifle. You had you had the uh, video on this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, and then I shot that guy at like 193 yards. Legit. Yeah. That's so a poke. That farthest shot I've ever taken. <laughs> I've never practiced out that past like 100 usually when I'm ranging yep. it in. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was insane. And I, it's kind of a crazy story because when I shot him, he did a triple backflip. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, is he down? Is he down? And then he got back up and all the other ones ran off, but he just stood there. So I snuck into like 60 yards and put another shot just in case and just dropped him lights out. So, all right. Did you, uh, was that a buck you had experience with before? Oh, no, 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 was, no. That was just, I wanted one that was just clean, just go in the big woods and just try to track one down. So nice. All right. And this, um, this next one has a million something views on the interwebs. <laughs> if I remember correctly, yeah, the, the smallest one of the season has the most <laughs> views. <laughs> Um, so this one, yeah, it's Instagram reel. It basically died in 10 seconds from my shot. So it's pretty cool because the Luminoc went right through his heart. So he's kind of a squiggly buck, um, but he's just a big four point. Barely got this little brow growing. Um, so this deer, I passed him about three or four times. He was in a bachelor group with two other bucks. And um, the other bucks with him were like a, another small four point and a three point. So it wasn't the greatest genetic area but that was in the first couple weeks of new hampshire bow season um but that was uh that one again like i was struggling to find a buck after i got my main one um to try to keep the slam going i wanted to get new hampshire i'm <laughs> done with a buck so i was just kind of trying to get a good one um for the first bit and then i was like yeah let's let's get rid of this buck so i love it so those are the two shire bucks Yep, so that's New Hampshire, and then this is Maine. So this buck right here, got him officially scored the other day. Uh, he's 128 inches is what he'll be in the um, Northeast Big Buck Club if I enter him. Um, so had him scored. He was killed out on an island. Um, he's just a really cool deer. He's got blading. He's got swooping. His beams... This one looks longer, but they're identical in length, which is really cool. Rad. Yeah, that's um, a gnarly rack on that thing. Yeah, so he was chocolatey and bloody when I killed him, so he was like dark, dark brown. Mm. Um, but he's got every spike <clears throat> because he had just shed his velvet, so he hasn't even rubbed these down. Um, and then he's got this cool extra point right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw that when you initially posted about about that buck. I know you took a close, <laughs> a close shot of that one. That's yeah. awesome. But yeah, he's just a cool buck. I, when I shot him, I was like, that's like a 140. <laughs> I just thought he was an absolute tank. And I was like, oh, he's probably 170 pounds. That deer was not more than 155 pounds, probably. He just, island bucks don't get as big, so. It's a good looking deer, though, man. Oh, yeah. Like, I would have been satisfied with that for the year. Um, he He's my second he was my second biggest buck at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I have one bigger one upstairs from Idaho, but 
yeah, I was like, Maine was definitely going to be my hardest state to finish for the slam was my opinion. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I got that done first, I was just like, that's a godsend. But And um, you had somebody who you were working with up there, um, or somebody who had helped you out at least like with a uh, place to stay and whatnot, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so this guy I met through Instagram, um, I basically was just like messaging him and he was like, hey, I'll give you a place to stay if you want to come out on out here for Maine. And I'm like, seriously? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, like most of it's posted private, but there's a couple places you can just drive around and see if you see a deer and knock on a door or something. Yep. And I guess like 80% of the deer that are killed on this island are from out-of-staters or from off-island people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will come on ferries or different things to get to these islands um, and then they'll boat from there. So he had like a 160 on camera and then a couple other ones and I had this one on camera and he had like piebald white socks feet. So that's like how he yeah. was. I only thought he was an eight pointer and then I saw that little point afterwards, but it counts. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if it counts for the, I need to ask the score. I forget if he counted that, but it's a deduction either way. Yeah. What do they say? If he can hang a ring on it, it counts. Yeah. yeah that's what the old timers say, but. Yeah, so well, it has to be an inch, but it's uh, he's a typical eight pointer, so it's kind of interesting how scoring works. Because mm -hmm. um, if you have the ninth point or the fifth point on one side and four points on the other, they, they deduct that score, so it's like takes away for, oh. the, for the net score. Yeah, so got it. It's actually worse with it, but it, it's cooler character wise, and character is all that matters with deer. That's, that's yeah, the biggest thing. I, it, scoring deer the only reason i talk about scores so people can understand so mm -hmm. if someone says like oh i shot a big eight pointer you're like well what's a big eight pointer so you have a score you have a way to understand and for me it's a good way to understand like this buck is probably four years old um this buck is probably two and a half or three just with bad genetics same with this one mm -hmm. it's just a gnarly new hampshire buck with three-year-old um and i sent in the teeth for some of the other ones but We'll see what this guy comes back, but he's going to be probably four and a half. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, he's just got thin bases, but that's just the genetics out there. Is yeah. They have smaller bodies and big antlers from all the apples, crab apples. And his minerals. beam gets, like, bigger as it gets yeah. away from his head. That I've never really... Yeah, I think his mass yeah. measurement is bigger on the H2, so right here than it is at the base, which is <laughs> <laughs> never happens. Yeah. But, baseball bat. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Cool, man. Very, uh, very cool looking deer. All right, let's break into these uh, big boys. All righty. So, do you want to move any of these? Yeah, let's move this one. Never thought I'd say I have too many deer. <laughs> Got too many antlers over here, Kyle. Yeah. So, this was the second to last one of the season. So, this was a random buck that I saw basically in a field probably a week before chasing a doe. And um, he was on public land um so for new hampshire that's like a stud of a deer he's like nine, i think he was 22 inches outside and i think he's 19 or 20 inside um for a spread so this this guy's new hampshire yep so wow. those, I, those are the three so i've never tagged out in my home state i've only gotten two before so because i didn't gun hunt so mm -hmm. yeah that was pretty pretty incredible this this guy had been rubbing i mean he had scars punctures all over his body like this thing was a fighter like he broke off this point right here and he's got a little over five inches for a base so like his yeah base is pretty good it's right at five inches so yeah, he was just mucking things up look at yeah. all that yeah he he had the biggest forehead on a deer i've ever seen i think it was like eight inches wide <laughs> like you could put him next to these deer even though moose was like 220 dressed like mm -hmm. his forehead wasn't even that big so so you were just doing some some scouting from the car and you saw this guy yeah so that that was i'm not a road hunter by any means i i hate road hunting but sometimes i'll satellite scout yep. you don't have a lot of fields um but i was going to a newer area where i scouted all summer and i saw a bunch of a primary scrape area so i knew there was going to be deer in there in the rut mm -hmm. what i didn't realize was probably a mile down the road that this i saw this buck one morning when i was getting late to my stand um and then like a week later if it is the same buck um i got one a couple miles down the road that i think it was like 
only a mile as the crow flies, which they can do in a night. So. Right. But yeah, that was up in up central New Hampshire. So, but but that was right after I got. Of course, I didn't see anything big with my gun, and then <laughs> with my bow, I see the bigger deer. I'm like, you got to be kidding me! Like I didn't do much scouting in New Hampshire. I kind of went off old hunting stuff from 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, so I keep notes of every time I see a buck the temperature, the wind direction, and the location. So I kind of went off that. But the more I realized that if you get outside your boundaries and you scout new places, find new places, your first couple hunts are always better. Um, Especially if you don't care about scent control, like your first ones are always going to be your best, and that's across the board anywhere in the country. Yeah, just less intrusion to your deer. Just kind of think it's a one-off. But you need to know where there's big bucks. Like, people will get lucky with a big buck, but then they won't shoot another one for a long time. It's like, the only way you can do it is you have to know there's big bucks in the area. Mm-hmm. Like, if they're not there, they're not there. And I've, I hunted a place where this, this year, where I basically hunted for like a week or two straight, and I knew there was a giant buck in there. Like, I got him on trail cameras, probably 150, 160 inch Big Woods, New Hampshire deer. Mm-hmm. And then I found out four days later through a friend that he had been killed by another gun hunter. So I was hunting for a deer that wasn't there. And there's not an, another, like, deer over 120 inches in yep. there. So, um, but honestly, I, I was like, at that point, I was like, if it's brown, it's down. <laughs> <laughs> so when this guy came out, I was set up on a pinch point of a swamp. Um, and then it kind of goes into a saddle. So it's like a perfect combination of three different things. It's got hemlocks and then it leads up to oaks. Nice. Um, so I was waiting for them to come out of a bedding area. Um, and I didn't like imagine in a million years that he'd be chasing her. He was right on her. Um, I did some calling before, but that's not what brought him in. He was just pushing her around. So mm-hmm. what I try to do in the rut and especially in lockdown phase, which is where they're paired off, they try to push in places where other people don't go or where like other predators like can't get them or other bucks to breed them. So yep. they'll push them into like the thickest parts or like a suburban neighborhood up against a rock wall, a fence, somewhere where the doe can't really run and he can keep pushing Just her up. Pin her, yeah. Yeah, so he pins her. So I equate it to bass fishing, like a bass, like when it's on its bed protecting it. The reason that you have a bed there is usually it's protected from two sides of it, like rocks. So the bass can fend off bluegills from like only one or two directions, not all of them, because then he would just wear himself out. Sure. So, yeah. Beautiful buck, man. Was that from the ground or no? You're no, elevated. No, I was out of my hunt light saddle. So my man. That was my first, second saddle buck actually ever. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Most of my deer come out of my summit climber. Um, but this year I tried saddle hunting because it was fun. Nice. Yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about that after because I know uh, you and Huntlight had a lot to do with the slam. Yeah. Um, all right. So some of these deer you didn't have a history with. But, yep. Um, yeah, the New Hampshire deer were all, <laughs> were all newbies, but then the other ones were I intentionally. Do you mind if I hand them over to you? You can do that. So this, Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so this guy, uh, this is Moose. That's what I call him, for obvious reasons. He's got palmated um, brow tines on both sides. He's got a double brow tine here. It almost looks like a second main beam, but it's not because it has to come from here. He's got palmation, which is something I've always wanted. Um, I knew about this deer. It had about 400 trail camera pictures, the most trail mm-hmm. camera pictures I've ever had of a deer. Um, and I knew he was probably going to go like high 130s 140s um and i didn't imagine like he's officially in the book right now at 147 wow so non-typical to just that's what gained him a lot of stuff and it's kind of cool because you i learned something so when you're scoring on these little points mm-hmm. they're, they're on both of these g2s but they don't count because the width is more than the length so they are an inch but they're more than an inch wide i see so it basically disqualifies him but he was rubbing he actually rubbed this tree before i killed him <laughs> ironically <laughs> but uh yeah this deer was about i think he was 218 dressed so he's giant body yeah like i'll never kill 
unless I go to Maine. Like, I'll probably never kill one that's a bigger body than that. I don't know, Kyle. You got a good little trajectory going on here. I don't know. <laughs> that, well, that's what I said. I said, told my buddy after I killed this. He was like, well, go get a bigger one. I'm like, dude, I don't know if I'll ever kill one bigger than this in New England. I mean, I had them on trail camera, like other big ones, but none of them daylighted or were patternable like this. Mm. Like, he came with three other bucks. I had to pass two huge bucks. Well, one huge buck and then the other one was like a small six but the other buck i passed was probably a little bit smaller than this to get this guy <laughs> which not m- most people in new England is like eh. that's a spot right but if there. you know that a deer is going to be in there yep. with another deer mm-hmm. it that's one way that you can you can like guarantee that you can pass something is when you know there's one way bigger in there so yeah, and you i know you've talked to i'm pretty sure some other guys about this um on some other pods and it's just like until you see it and hold it it's yeah. just such a cool buck yeah this thing's heavier than the doe i just shot <laughs> just, just got so much character i love that the tree still on it. yeah <laughs> you did a great job um or did you bring this one in i brought him in but i still yeah. kept him yeah yeah dude you did a great job and you did the euros too yep those look great yeah so he's just a, this he, is moose yeah he's just an awesome <laughs> buck <laughs> wow that was the buck of my dreams like i've always want one wanted one that's like palmated yeah he he's not as palmated as some people's like that are like crazy but he's like but, cool palmated you know how some yeah. are like short palmated they look like, yeah. a, like a bluegill kind of curled up yeah this is just next level and he has decent amount of time length like this one's nine inches so like he still has yeah this this buck is no joke he still has i'm not even like buck. worthy of like talking or <laughs> talking about this or touching this thing but no yeah incredible so well, this is moose ladies and gents the the funny thing is if you knock away his non-typicals and like other stuff he like barely makes pope and young at like 127 and oh and he's got a hole in the horn and from uh like the gnats getting in the velvet so he's kind of got everything oh yeah look at it's that it's like acorning too so if you feel it it feels like it's like a drop time grown but right here you're talking about yeah very cool yeah it's about to be one right yeah and then he's got like i thought it was velvet but it's almost rub clear right here so he's got it there and then a couple other places but these brown times are gnarly. Yeah, that's <laughs> that was the my favorite thing when I saw him in velvet in person. So you saw you saw like the palmation right off the bat. Yeah, so like when you see him in the video, he looks like he's like seven inches at the base in the video of him in velvet. I'm gonna so, hand him back over to you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm more Sorry. worried about the antlers than the <laughs> than the microphone. Not for me. I'm more worried about the <laughs> mic equipment, but. Yeah, so I brought that one to the taxidermist, and then I was like, once I got that one, I was like, I kind of want a picture with all of them. <laughs> so, Incredible. But, yeah. So that was a buck I had a lot of history with um, in an area where there's a lot of hunters. Um, right down the street from it, there was about like eight tree stands and probably 300-yard stretch. So they were definitely getting hunted. I was just where he was during daylight. So. Gotcha. And I got in there probably left the house four hours before sunrise and got in the stand two hours before sunrise to kill him nice I knew he would be in there so i i did that intentionally not to spook any of the deer but did you sneak over to like zone 10 or something zone 11 oh yeah. right on yep so that's the farthest I've yeah, i was gonna say gone. that's a that's a hike yeah. from here <laughs> yeah it was almost like with traffic sometimes like two hours which yeah. i was like i'm never doing that ever again. yeah that's what i just did <laughs> yeah zone 11 has yeah. some of the biggest deer in the state um for like quantity wise like there's one town that i found probably six pope and youngs and like only had two trail cameras we ain't telling you where in zone 11 that is nope <laughs> <laughs> just in case I'd, i don't move anywhere I, and i stay here just in case i need that in my back pocket but oh yeah i give away a lot of spots to people which i probably shouldn't but you also did that too when uh, Even though I, didn't, tra- I never went there, but <laughs> it was a transient buck, um, if anything. But uh, yeah, I'd like to talk more too about your uh, generosity in terms of helping people get on them. Um, Kyle, have you talked to anybody about this most recent buck? Um, the video is coming out this weekend, but this is the first time I've talked to anyone about it. All right, so the video is uh, is definitely going to drop before we put this one out. Um, I actually might release this episode on Christmas, believe it or not. 
because I'm still going to release on Mondays. Sweet. Um, so, yeah, can I hand them over to you and you can talk us through them? You can hold them. You haven't <laughs> held them yet, so. <laughs> like I said, I'm not worthy. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, I can't. I'm speechless, man. It, this is such a good podcast to do as a follow-up to my last one because I just did one about gun control and I was speechless in a bad way about <laughs> how dirty politics are and I'm like speechless in a good way now. So this is like the perfect follow-up. Because um, like right. over photos, he doesn't look... He's huge. <laughs> like, I don't know. Some From some of the photos, I'm like, people aren't going to see the justice of like this, but when you see the time length, like just over 12 inch g2s 26 and a half inch main beam on this side um 11 inch g3s four or five inch g4s like he's just the only thing that didn't make him a booner was the the uh scorer said was the brow tines he said these are actually good for fours but he said the brow tines are what caused it not to be boon crockett just for general size yeah just like score wise and stuff he said that's what do you have to do like to get into boone uh 170 and it scored what uh 167 but it's probably after the 60 day dry period it's probably gonna be like 164 which is still like I'll, <laughs> yeah i don't think i'll ever beat that kyle this is so uh like i said i'm speeches but so impressive man how'd you i mean let's not give away strategy or location or nothing but like when you come across a deer like this like how and and what and why <laughs> you, you don't tell anyone that's the first step is yeah. everyone gets really excited and it's it's cool to share knowledge about deer but one of the things i've learned is i told someone about a deer one time and that deer got killed because of something i said and mm -hmm. i told myself i i wouldn't um make that mistake again um which is not to say that that's the reason why i killed the deer um but I will say that, like, if you put in the time and you pass deer, like, I passed a deer that would probably score more than all these except for moose that morning that I shot, or I shot this guy that afternoon. That morning I passed a 120-inch 8-pointer, and then I passed a, or a 10-pointer, and then a probably 130, 140 class 8-pointer, which is a huge 8-pointer. Yeah. He's probably 130-something inches, and that buck was just insane um i'm still can't believe like how huge this this no, rack yeah, is he's uh oh no i'm just like you, you keep holding like, it i'm just like what, what? yeah yeah you know and like um he just you know, glue in the forest like you know those composite um like rattle antlers you see it like yeah. cabela's like this puts those to shame <laughs> 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 like just for like general like time length incredible well it doesn't mean anything score wise but like his mass time uh width is kind of cool like like the thickness of i love thickness on antlers on the tines yeah and he has that mm -hmm. which is cool like his beam is just like right here is just as thick as like his tines which is just super cool and they just don't make typicals like this like no. an eight or nine year old buck which is what he was they don't they usually get trash like they usually do what moose did moose i'm gonna get his tooth back soon but I believe him to be six and a half and see how much trash he put on like yeah once those deer hit a certain age <clears throat> seven eight they usually put on trash in new england do you think he went atypical because he was hit before did you see any like injuries on him or you think no. that, that was just like um a circumstance of age and stuff i think it was just age and genetics none of the other bucks in that herd had uh weird brow tines um or anything even close to that they did have good racks though that's the first thing i realized is like the genetics i'll always look at like certain towns mm -hmm. or counties in the record books of like what produces big deer and you oh, can do smart. that in any state yeah to try to find a general consensus but there's always going to be sleeper towns or counties that like are really good that nobody talks about or puts in the record right. book so so um like i said without putting locations or nothing like yeah. that on um this is a buck it's not like a buck like moose where you had hundreds of pictures of pictures of him before you went out to pursue him um how'd you stumble upon this bad guy yeah so just scouting um i scouted a bunch this summer um i did like a 
summer sales job, so, like, on the days that I wasn't working after church, I would go, like, glass fields and do stuff like that, mm-hmm. which in Mass, there's a little bit more fields than I feel like in my parts of New Hampshire, at least that, like, aren't posted. Yep. Um, so this town in particular, you can't hunt the town land. You can't t- hunt anywhere without written permission, so it's extremely strict. Yep. Um, and, like, everyone is liberal. <laughs> Yeah. So there's no way to get hunting from like unless I sweet talk the crap out of someone like and do my kind of strategies. Mm-hmm. There's like people could be like, oh, there's a huge buck there. And unless they're willing to like poach it with a crossbow or something like I could have shot this deer illegally three or four times like easily. Because he was just wasn't phased by your presence. Oh, no, he is. But like, like if he sees a car stop, like he'll run. Okay. Like, I see what you mean. So, so he's smart, but I mean, in the fact that like, he'll be in like people's yards mm-hmm. and like tucked away. But like, if he knows that you're looking for him or like trying to photograph him or something, like they switch their mind, like they can see, I felt like he could see the, like he had fear in his eyes when I saw him. Gotcha. And that was like, something cool to me is like, I'm going to get you. I'm going <laughs> to knock every single door I can to possibly find you again. Cause mm-hmm. He went about 2.2 miles from where I found him this summer, oh, which really okay. isn't that far. Yep. I mean, I've had deer go eight miles. Like there, there's some really far distances. Um, one buck in New Hampshire that a lot of people are chasing. That one traveled 14 miles from where his sheds were. So you, what, 14? That's incredible. Yeah. So you, so you did have some history with him, but he kind of ghosted you for a little bit. Yeah. So there was another buck I was looking for. So he's about a, a similar size. Um, frame wise he had 10 points and then he had a drop time um, and I was trying to relocate him from last year I didn't hunt here but I had knowledge of the deer and put out trail cameras for him before I went back to college because I came home for like Christmas break and stuff Mm -hmm. and I was trying to look for that deer but I couldn't find him and then I stumbled upon this guy um, and I like saw him once and I was like okay that's a deer (laughs) I want to go after so I saw him in velvet, and the first thing I noticed was just the extreme time length growing in velvet. And deer always look bigger in velvet, so I'm like, this deer is like 170, 180. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Just giant. And, um, yeah, so I lost track of him, as most New England deer do. As soon as they shed velvet, they just disappear. And that field that he was in had, like, four hunting blinds on it because, like, other people had hunted it. So, like, I was never going to hunt it anyways because I know he's not going to be there. Like, these right. deer don't go into fields during the daytime. They're not dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a reason why he gets eight or nine. There's crossbow hunters. There's cars that they can get hit by. Like, right. there's a bunch of things. So, like, the fact that this deer got this old is just testament to how strong and, like, how willing they are to survive. He had a giant like six inch gash on his stomach from either a hunter or a fighter like fighting other deer so you said there was blinds out so he's been hunted which is oh, why you say he's vigilant yeah, yeah like he he knew i st- when i re-found him that morning i pulled over and looked at him and he snort wheezed at me because he thought <laughs> like i was trying to like be an opponent mm-hmm. and then i stepped out of my car and immediately as my car door shut he bolted, See even though he was with a doe, which most bucks will never leave a doe. Like he ran out of like sight mm-hmm. and then waited for her to walk off and then he chased her. So like he, kn- he knew what was He's up. A like, survivor. He, he knows what's up. But, um, ironically when I refound him, it was next to a driveway. I already had permission. So I was already in the right area. Nice. Um, but I never thought that this buck would be here and there's almost never, any other bucks there like he was the only big one that lived there Mm -hmm. well he doesn't live there he was only there for her so got you so they were locked down and so did you had to sorry you had to get new permission or you just used the current i I had to knock like 20 doors that so you're bringing out the big guns yeah so (laughs) i'm a lot more aggressive when it's like i need permission because the deer's back there yeah but it's also a lot easier to say hey i just want permission for the next like 48 hours like I literally, some of the spots I was like, Hey, can I just have permission for this week? Cause I know this buck's not living there and he's not going to be there forever. He's mm-hmm. only there for 48, 24 to 48 hours while he's breeding this doe. So I knew that where he was going to be because he pushed this doe back into this, like, I mean, it's a micro like fire pond swamp in between this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was like, it's right near a main road. Like he's going to push her up there and they're going to go bed down for six hours. So while they did that, I went and knocked all these doors 
And then I actually asked a lady, I was like, hey, can I do wildlife photography? Um, back there, just there's a huge buck that I'm trying to film. And she was like, sure. So I went back there, filmed it, jumped him up six hours later. And I was like, okay, he's still back there with her. I go knock the door. I'm like, hey, can I have permission to hunt? She said, absolutely not. No <laughs> <I'm> way. Like, Crap. <laughs> and uh, which I figured because she looked like a vegan. She had like peace signs everywhere. And I was like, yeah. okay, that's understandable. Yeah. And then I was like, no, totally fine. So then I went and knocked on their neighbor. Or I didn't even knock. I was driving down the driveway or like the street. And I see her about to get in her car to leave. Mm-hmm. And I stop her from getting in her car. I pull up behind her car to block her in. And I'm like, hey, how's it going? Can I, I'll just talk to you for a quick second. And uh, she was out there with her son. I'm like, are you the homeowner? And she's like, no, but my son is. And I start pitching to them, like, what I wanted to do. I'm like, I'm sure you've seen him. There's a giant buck in your backyard. Normally, I'll never tell someone. Because if they tell someone that's another hunter or their friend or a plumber that's a hunter. Right. They're going to call them and say, hey, this guy was asking about this big deer. You should go back out there and shoot. So, I don't usually tell people. That's smart. I usually say, like, oh, there's, like, one deer I'm looking for. And I won't tell them or show them photos, at least of that deer. Because right. I'm worried about that. Kind of <laughs> because then yeah. they'll be like, oh, can you send me a bunch of photos and videos of them? And then they'll post them on a Facebook page or something. And it'll just right. get out there. So, in this scenario, it's just like, hey, can I have, like, 48 hours? And she was like... Absolutely. I'm from Vermont. I'm not against hunting. Oh, nice. So I was like, sweet. So then I knocked on their neighbor and a couple other ones because for the 500 feet rule, you have to legally be away from other houses. And they only own two acres. I see. So, I mean, these are like right in people's backyards. Yep. And that's why they're there because nobody hunts. So I got permission of their neighbor as well. They just said, don't leave a gut pile. Don't bring it out during the daytime when you get it just for the other neighbor's sake. What were they like? Um, They were just old people. So I just like, hey, how are you? And just smile and just be nice. And I didn't ask him about hunting until probably 15 minutes into talking. And sometimes older people just want to talk to someone. Sure. Because they don't get as much like communication. So when you're someone my age and they see like, wow he can actually hold a conversation and right not just be on his phone and stuff i think people appreciate that no doubt um so i just had a normal conversation with him i i said just gave him clear expectations i kind of explained who i was yeah um i never like offer people money i never like say that i do youtube videos i never like mention that sort of stuff i just was kind of honest with him and i was Mm -hmm. like i love hunting it's a huge part of my life and there's a deer back there that I'd love to hunt. I already got permission from your neighbors. Oh, nice. Yeah, per- that's a perfect plug, too, yeah, right? Yeah, so I can just... Yeah. I, it's called bandwagoning in sales, but you can just bandwagon the people you just got <laughs> permission from. So once nice. I get one, I get more. It's on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... But the problem with mass and why it's so difficult is, let's say I get permission from seven, seven different houses to make it legal to hunt this little four-acre piece of woods if I have one person say no or like go back on their word, Mm -hmm. then I can't hunt that area. Right. So it's, it's very high risk, high reward, um, Mm -hmm. scenarios. And, but the deer by no means are dumb. Like they know the difference when someone steps out that five feet from their yard, they know it's on Mm -hmm. versus some old lady. They'll have the same process. Like some lady will feed them in their yard or something like that. Like that's a whole different ball game than, someone actually actively hunting him so gotcha so what was that day like when you uh were going after him yeah so i hunted those other bucks i actually saw a big buck breed a doe and passed those two big ones and then was driving around found him knocked all the permission and i literally changed right there so i had like an adidas shirt on so i put on all my scent lock and i just creeped out there and the kid actually filmed me from his back window <laughs> on snapchat and sent me that video um And uh, he was just, like, saw me creeping back with my bow. So I snuck to, like, three downed, um, like, kind of like, what do you call it, uprooted trees. Mm -hmm. So I I got up to that, and I could hear him immediately pushing her up against the swamp. And, like, I could see the tines shimmering, because they're so long, so I could hear, and then I could see, like, glowing, like, going back and forth. So was this, like, early afternoon? Like, yeah, so I got in there at like 11.30 got by the it. time I got all the permission. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went in there from like 11.30, and then I shot him at like 4.05 or 4 o'clock. Hold on, so you, you got permission from that, that older couple? 
mm-hmm. and then just went right in the field. After I got permission from everywhere I legally needed, I just got out. That day? There. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. So it was the same day. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah. So all of those permissions I got that day mm-hmm. <laughs> and killed them that same day. <laughs> and legit. it was right before the snowstorm, the small one that we got. So yeah. I talked to the guy after I shot him, the kid, and he was like, yeah, they've been back there for two two days so that he wouldn't have been with her for a third day. I see. So I, after that snowstorm, I would have lost him. So yeah. it was like all meant to be. I see. So yeah, so I didn't interrupt. So you got to the blowdowns. You saw yep. him pushing her around. Yeah, so I could hear it, and I was like, I don't know why I went on my phone, but I did like an Instagram poll. I'm like, they're at 100 yards. <laughs> Should I push in or be passive and just sit back and it was like 50 50 and i'm like well that doesn't help me oh that was this buck yeah oh i think i participated in yeah that. <laughs> so a bunch of people like were like do this do this and I'm like what's well, buck of a lifetime i'm gonna push a little bit more mm-hmm. so i did some calling nothing and i got like 40 yards from like you have to get inside their bubble like when they're in lockdown you have you have to get close so if mm-hmm. i if i hung out of a tree i never would have seen these deer so I pushed into like where I legally was allowed to. I was probably like 40 yards from the property line um, to the old people's. And I went in this mountain laurel in between like four down logs. So another group of logs. And I was like, okay, I have like cover behind me from the mountain laurel so for, for my shadows. And then I have the logs so I can just creep up if I need to. Yep. And probably 45 minutes before dark, um, I just hear her come crashing through and he's pushing her because they're getting up to feed again for the night time and uh, he's pushing her and she, she walks past me so I'm like staying as still as possible she walks past me and then he comes out and just, <laughs> just like a moose and I'm like oh my gosh and I pull back my bow and I barely can get it back because I'm shaking so bad and like mm-hmm. all these I didn't really shake until after yep this one I just like lost my mind so if you hold this I pull back my bow and I'm like shaking and I let it loose and I almost jump oh no <laughs> I like I would, normally I hold my form and I like let go of the trigger release and just like keep it there but this one I shot and I just like jumped almost yep, yep. And I was like I, I drilled him so I was like okay I, I hear a loud thump yeah I see him run away um, how many yards you think he ran about 100 yards. No, the shot. Oh, the shot was like 15 yards. Like, it was so close. And on the ground, your heart's pumping, like, even more than... Must have been like your, your uh, Western hunts, Pretty in much, a way, like, yeah. Even better. Like, <laughs> nothing can compare to that, so... Yeah. What was it like, because um, obviously you had to get a, get him out. I'm going to give him back to you. Sure. I am not worthy. You can put um, him on the table. Okay. What was it like getting him out of there? Because obviously you had to go to the property owner's property to get them out yep what so, was it like kind of celebrating with them and the oh this, my gosh the, the guy who was ever. filming you out of the house so he didn't know that it happened um because i got out of the woods and i immediately like i don't know why i started driving in my car like down the road and i just started like crying in my car <laughs> and i was just like what just happened because i didn't find him at that point and I was just like, what just happened? And my buddy's like, go look for him. And I'm like, okay. So then I turned around, went back to their guy's house. And he's like, I thought you left. And I was like, yeah, I did. I just need to drive around to clear my brain. Because at, at, you're just not thinking when you shoot a deer like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not like a gun you can track right away. So I waited like 30 minutes. Not long enough that I should have. But I was like, I know I probably hard punched him. So I snuck up to this area. And he crossed like this little the little swamp where he was halfway and then i found him and uh, his head was like almost propped up perfectly and he was he must have like crashed into a tree because like his legs were almost around a tree and i was like you smoked him there he is and i was like he's dead and i just grabbed him and i was like oh my gosh so i get out of the woods and the guy sees me with my bow and he's like did you get him and i was like i got him and he's like (laughs) freak yeah <laughs> with more different words and, of course and uh, he's probably like 25 28 and uh we start hugging each other we're strangers <laughs> we met like six hours before he's like dude i'm so happy for you and i was like this is the biggest thing. like you don't understand how big this deer is because non-hunters are just like that's a cool buck but they have no idea yeah um so then i called my buddy because i'm like there's no way in heck this is gonna fit in my trunk it's like 185 pound buck yeah not fitting in the sedan <laughs> no so i was like 
because this New Hampshire one, I actually had to cut the hindquarters off to fold them in. No way. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't fit in my Corolla, so I had to cut him in half, basically. Do you trunk them or you put them in the back seat? Oh, I put them in the trunk. Yeah, there's no way. I have like a blue tarp that I put down. And uh, yeah, so in mass, you used to have to have like a limb or something visible. But that's not a rule anymore, so you oh. can put them in a trunk. <laughs> yeah, don't ask me why. But I think it's just to stop poaching or whatever. But yeah. anyway, so when I got that deer, I was like, okay, he's huge. And at this point, he's probably only 80 yards from a road. Like the like the main like road that like all these houses were on. So I'm like, mm-hmm. it's not going to be a far drag, but I would like help. And right. I also can't gut him, so he's going to be... 10 times heavier with them inside and field with not being field dressed. <clears throat> yep. Um, so I called my buddy. He's, and of course his truck had flat tires. So I had to bring like one of the commercial, like it's just like a platform. It doesn't have a bed. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, this is going to be weird. <laughs> but, um, so we drag it out after I tag it and, uh, we didn't even take photos. Cause I'm like, we're going to just bring it to this guy's house right down the road. Or, mm-hmm. Cause it was, it only ran a hundred yards. So we drive it into the driveway. I'm like, here it is. He comes out and then his mom comes out and we just had a really cool interaction. Just, they were asking me questions about hunting and, um, just about the meat. And then probably a week ago I brought him jerky. So, Oh, good on you, man. Yeah. So they were happy about that, but it's pretty cool. So they're, they're a non hunting family, but they were all about it. Yeah. She was, I mean, she took a little bit more convincing than he did. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, she was like, oh, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but like, I don't know if my neighbors are okay with that. And I'm like, I assure you, like, I'll, I'll be very discreet. Like I'll leave no trace. Cause when people think of hunting, they think of like, there's going to be loud gunshots. There's going to be blood everywhere. There's going to, you're going to drag it through my yard. Like you just have to give people clear expectations. Gotcha. Um, so like I literally left no trace and, uh, ironically, um, he like texted me a week later and he's like the neighbor said they haven't seen the big bug <laughs> 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 i was like yep he's in my belly <laughs> but uh but that there was like a neighbor four houses down so like, well it doesn't affect them so. that's legit but, uh, yeah it was pretty <laughs> funny oh man what a story buddy yeah he even took pictures with it which was super cool Oh yeah, he did a grip and grin. Yeah, so he was he was like, "Can I take pictures of that?" I was like, "Get up there, dude!" So he takes pictures. I'm like, "Yeah, get one for your Tinder proof." <laughs> and and uh, my buddy goes, "That or girls will just swipe left." <laughs> and the mom's dying laughing, and we're making jokes about like the bucks being all horny during the rut, and that's the only reason they're there. So she's like dying laughing. She's like, "Well, I was gonna say it, but you did first. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we were just laughing like with absolute strangers that I met that day. And oh. my buddy's like, "What is going on? Why are these people so nice?" Because he's used to like people all being against hunting, so he was just like, "What is going on?" Mm-hmm. But I almost didn't knock that house, so. I'm really glad I did because the story wouldn't have come true. Uh, what a the, the whole story is amazing. Obviously the the antlers in itself, but what a great story, man! And what a what a nice conclusion to the New England Slam. Some people were like, "Oh, you shouldn't do it. It's too hard." And some other people were like, "It's not a slam because there's only three states." I'm like, I understand, but like. I think three is going to be enough and hard enough as it is. So three is pretty cool. And I like that you did it like the three coastal states. Yeah. Well, not that like Rhode Island is not coastal, but like you, you had to travel a lot of, you know, a big distance to get all these bucks, you know, if you add it up, obviously. So, um, and is it a, like, let's say you do the other three next year, then it's a, then you can tell all the other people that's a slam. Yeah. Um, you had a lot of support, not that, I don't want to say that, not that you didn't need it, but um, you had a lot of support, and yeah. you've been very clear about that, and um, between, <clears throat> um, you know, the, the strength you get through your faith, but also your um, your family, your friends, people, you know, that you interact with, you know, through uh, your pages. Um, do you want to give a shout out to anybody in particular, or? Just to do a general thanks to people. Man, I mean, AJ from Hunt Light obviously was one of the first people who believed in me. Like, other companies kind of, like, I didn't go out of my way to try to get sponsored by any means. But Mm -hmm. 
because for me, like I told you before, I'm not all for like sponsorship stuff. And I told AJ that like at the beginning, I'm like, dude, I, I'm not going to be promoting your stuff all the time. Like that's mm-hmm. just not who I am. I don't want a bunch of stuff right clouding my this episode brought media. to you <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. i don't want a list of 12 sponsors in my videos at the beginning that's good for those people that want that but that's just not kind of who i am and that's right. not the reason i hunt is not for yeah of course like you can't eat the antlers but that's just a i'm just trying to get mature deer and that's just a course of trying to do that mm-hmm. um, i wouldn't call myself a trophy hunter but i do try to get big bucks and mature bucks and that's because it's more of a challenge like on a year that I'm I'm younger, I have the time and the support system at this point that I can spend a lot of time hunting. Let's say next year if I don't have all the time and with a new job or something, of course I'm not going to be as picky. Mm-hmm. Um, but with my standpoint, I, I have a lot of people, obviously Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father for helping me in my faith um, to be able to do this. But also my family um, has been a big support. Um, I never thought in a million years I was going to do this. And I just had the idea one day and growing up watching like Brett Joy and uh, Jake Bennett and a bunch of different people doing like the Sea Bucks and Realtree, the Hunt Main guys, like yeah. all those guys, like they don't know it, but like I'm very supportive of them because I, growing up watching that, I never would have dreamed that I'd be kind of doing the same thing. Right. Um, I do all my editing from my phone. I don't have any special technology. I don't have the nicest camera in the world. Um, but I appreciate people still following the journey and supporting me because I honestly thought a lot of people would give me hate thinking I'm like poaching or baiting <laughs> since I got so many. I was like, maybe someone's going to like think I did it bad. But mm-hmm. everybody was more than supportive like because they know how much time because I'm posting daily of everything I'm doing. Yeah, I can always count on you to post something. Yeah. So. You know, I follow along pretty religiously. Yeah, so I, I hate social media. Um, I've always said that. I yep. told everybody that from the get-go. <laughs> um, but I think it can be used for good um, in some scenarios. So no doubt i'm glad that i'm trying to use it towards that and it it makes you appreciate the highs um and also in the lows you need to remember like moments like this where if i don't kill another deer bigger than that i'll still be happy even if i didn't post another thing i'd be happy about all these so so um yeah just uh, congratulations man like i said i don't even feel like i can talk like give congrats or describe it in any way but well, it's, thanks it's, to you by the way for supporting me too like oh, you're dude, one no, of the biggest oh, yeah. supporters too trust me i wasn't throwing you a softball to say hey matt you know <laughs> it wasn't for you bro um no i remember so i met you and your dad at um your dad was like one of the nicest guys i've ever met yeah, by the way awesome. um i met you guys at uh, the new hampshire outdoor expo mm-hmm. and then um we kept in touch social media a little bit and then you came on the pod at Huntstock, and that's where you called the shot and all this. And it's just really cool to. <laughs> cool is not I the right it word. Would be it's like just <laughs> three bucks, three six points in each state. That's why I was like, maybe I'll get a six point in each state. Not even thinking that I'd. This buck, I really thought I'd get him. Like, but I didn't. Yeah. I didn't think anything else would happen that great. <laughs> I was a little behind getting the Huntstock um, episodes out around the the time of Huntstock, I was closing out at landscape company. So I got backlogged over the summer, but so by the time I released our episode, you had already killed a few of these. Yeah. <laughs> and in the episode, I felt like, you know, re- looking back at it, I just felt like such a jackass. Cause you were, <laughs> I was like, would you call it a slam if you shot a doe? And you're like, I'm pretty sure I could kill a buck dude. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, this kid's confident. And, uh, yeah. Confident Look at that. or dumb. No, legit. I think <laughs> <laughs> a little both. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I think, um, I mean, if you put in the, yeah, like, I don't think it's dumb I, at all. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm a better hunter than every, anyone. Like, that's what I always tell people, mm-hmm. I, but I will work harder than you. Like, that's the only thing that is like sustainable. And mm-hmm. I think I put a lot of pressure on myself once I got the main buck to try to beat it. Um, not necessarily bigger, but continue to finish the slam. So the worst hunting I had this year was when I had that pressure, when I started to relax and just rely on what I'm good at and the strengths that I have been hunting and which is not always running and gunning. It's being aggressive, but putting the aggressiveness in the right places Mm -hmm. and like sitting up in a stand 20 feet high, 
doing what I need to, or in this case being hyper aggressive from the ground, not trekking through, like making a bunch of noise, trying to like spot and stock. That just doesn't work, always work in the big right. woods. So, Wow. Well, Kyle, congratulations, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, what's next for the rest of the season that we got a few more weeks here. So tomorrow morning I'm bringing out a kid to try to get his first deer, but other than that, I'm just going to spend time with family. Christmas is coming up. So mm-hmm. I, uh, I do have a, a doe tag, but I'm, I don't want to take anything more out of the population. <laughs> are you, well, are you, are you, uh, meat. are you running out of room too? Oh yeah. For like, storage. Yeah. So storage is one issue and I don't know. I just, I'd rather see other people's joy come from like getting them it's just as, like i'm just as happy bringing people out as i am when i get my own yeah i mean you took somebody out you're taking somebody out tomorrow but you've already taken a few guys out this year got, yep. got them on some deer yep so i got my buddy on a good buck um he missed it and then i had another buck that my buddy shot injured and then two other people i brought out they got their first deer that's so. what's up dude yeah so we're t- we're Two for four. <laughs> That's batting five hundred's good. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, hey man, congratulations on the New England Slam. What um what are you thinking about for next year, if anything? We there yet? No. no. <laughs> it's still still I need savoring. To figure out where I'm gonna live. That's the <laughs> that's the main thing is just figuring out my life. Um, obviously, family comes first, and I want my own family. So right. I try to date more find a wife and then i'll focus on (laughs) hunting but yeah uh, we'll see i'm definitely trying to further my career i want to work for Mm -hmm. like a whitetail properties or something i know we've talked about that a little bit yeah gonna be the new uh jeff sturgis yeah so right that's the guy right yeah Yeah, so i i've always wanted to to do something like jeff does and i've i've known him for a little bit um just over like email but i've always wanted to do that kind of stuff and follow my passion and that's one of the reasons why I started social media is I wanted a little bit of a falling once I went into that industry. Yep. Um, it's just hard because you have to pump a lot of money into it. Uh, and most of the people, that's not their first career. What sure. properties, it's kind of like a side gig that they, once they have capital and money, they pump it into it for mm-hmm. marketing. So, But I also don't know if I want to do it in New Hampshire because it would make a lot more land posted, but it would also increase the size of the deer. So. Yeah kind of a love-hate relationship because if you private privatize land and start leasing in a state it makes the state terrible mm-hmm. not for size of deer but for access and i don't want that to ever happen in new england yeah we're seeing a little bit of that and well not so much like whitetail property stuff but <clears throat> like up in maine um like you're not like 20 was it 20 what are the islands 25 or 26 remember no, I can't remember off the top of my head. Either way, up in like that China area, there's a, so much, so many people moving up and just posting. It's a shame. Yeah. But Southern New Hampshire is all posted. Yeah. Like it's getting terrible. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and like you mentioned, like you're like I, I got to figure out where I'm gonna live. You're you're pretty fresh out of college. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so. I just graduated right before the season started. So. I'm. Uh, I I do like a summer job, and that's the only reason why I was able to make enough money to like. It, I could live on it for a year, but mm-hmm. I shouldn't. <laughs> I'm 23 and I need to start I love, saving up. But. I love that you 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 like seize the moment though. Yeah. Like this is uh. My parents said, "Are you done after like this one? <laughs> My third one? They're not. Are you done? <laughs> so that's it, right? <laughs> I'm like, eh, let's see if we can get one. I got one. I think it's gonna pop up on camera again. Uh, we got like four, and they're like, "You done? I'm like, well, five. One more. One more big one in mass." <laughs> Because I almost stopped after the, this big New Hampshire one. I'm like, okay, I can't get better than this. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that thing popped out. <laughs> I thought he was dead, to be honest. I was looking on bow hunt mass all the time to see if he got shot. But mm. I'm I, almost ready to follow them again. I had to turn it off. <laughs> I was feeling bad about myself. <laughs> Great page, though. Dude. That's yeah. the other problem. We could have a whole podcast on social media if how puts a lot of pressure on young hunters like i tell people just shoot what makes you happy yeah that's me man yeah just go with the flow for me personally 
I love passing deer to see what they'll get to their potential, but I realize that that deer is probably never going to live. Like my neighbor shot two deer that I passed down the street that aren't big by any means, but he's going to eat them. So I don't care. Right. Like, that's what hunting's all about. Mm-hmm. So Kyle, I think most people who um, <clears throat> tune into this tune into this already follow you, but for anybody who doesn't, uh, why don't you give us your handles and um, some of the stuff you're doing? Got banned on TikTok for showing the big buck too many times. Um, so Wait, it's why? Showing dead animals, they just they block everything. Yeah, they ban you. Yeah, so they gave me two warnings and then they cut me loose. I thought that was only like kill shots you couldn't do. Anything that like is a dead animal, even if you do like fake deer and all that stuff. Yeah, so get out of here. I got like four hundred thousand likes yeah. on TikTok. Yeah. TikTok's like super liberal with their guidelines, but wow. not with naked women. That's fine though. You can just dance around all you want naked. But. <laughs> yeah, good point. I'm dead serious. Like, I don't have TikTok, but I gotta assume it's um, it's pretty much like Rails, right? Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, just a lot more weirder stuff. I'm surprised they booted you, but yeah. now that you say it, either way, so, so I have not like on TikTok Bose, anymore. I have a Bose Bros and Bucks one on TikTok, but I've like. A thousand followers and I never post on it. Mm-hmm. So if you want to fo- follow me, Bows, Bros, and Bucks on Instagram or KBB Outdoors 2.0. The, I try to make the KBB Outdoors one a little bit more professional and then the Bows, Bros, and Bucks I post like the YouTube video thumbnails every single week. Um, and then also that will lead into maybe I'll do a couple podcasts once the season's over and everything's died down next month. And, you're, and the Bows, Bro. What is, give it to me again. Bows, Bows bro. Bros. Oh, there it is. And bucks. Bows, Bros, and Bucks. I got it right the first podcast. Yeah, um, that's embedded into your YouTube channel, right? Correct. Yep. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, so it's under the podcast um, part of it. Smart. Podcasts are... I'm not a huge fan of, like... I listen to probably only, like, four podcasts, including yours. Thank you. Um, only because I just... I don't know. It, it's not always for me, just because I'm a visual. Like, I like the learn that way but i don't know that's just also the time of day i also like watching stuff because i'm a visual guy but if i'm like driving somewhere yeah i'll listen to a podcast so right on the outdoor drive is a good one there's backcountry mm-hmm. pa yours and then northwoods white hills big bucks or big woods bucks those are all all good podcasts so. dude i hunted with those guys really that was it was so cool because i was listening to their podcast they had only been doing the pod for like a year or two mm-hmm. and then like i walked into the, the cabin and like hal's by this campfire like telling the story and i'm just like wait <laughs> it's like it's oh, like yeah, a live they, podcast they've blown up now that's they're the, amazing i'd say the only thing i hate about new england hunting is the fad of tracking i love tracking deer and i will shoot a deer tracking i'll do all that but for some reason the, we don't hunt for views but tracking just gets so many views yeah you cannot kill a deer and you could just track one and be like live on a track mm-hmm. and you'll get hundreds of thousands of views for not killing something but then you bow hunt and you shoot a close to booner and it probably won't get any views i've noticed that same thing and a lot of guys will mislabel their their um you know the title of their video because they'll, yeah. they'll be still hunting or hunting out of a truck. Yeah. And then they'll say they tracked it. Yeah. So, but shout out to yeah. those legit trackers. Big Woods Bucks, oh, they're yeah. next level. There's a cool, I want to shout out this guy. He he has a lot of good kind of wandering whitetails. He's a mm-hmm. newer channel from Vermont, I think it is. And, mm-hmm. Or Maine. And he's got, I think it's Vermont. And he uh, he makes a lot of good quality content. That's oh, yeah. just like straight into the action, not a lot of BS and yep. drone footage and stuff. It's just Yeah, I follow good, him too. Good solid stuff. Definitely. All right. Um Kyle. Nice Thanks man. Yeah as always. Oh yeah. So um yeah by the time this comes out this video will be out so I just it's a celebration of you man. This is uh like I said it's very motivating and um good luck out in the field tomorrow. Appreciate it. Yeah it's uh I had people sending clips of kind of sending like who they are and stuff, and I forgot to ask you because I'm an idiot. But no, we talked about it. I'm just we? I've just been late to the party. Oh, okay. I don't I don't remember who I asked, but <laughs> a bunch of people sent in little clips of just seeing who they are and how we met, and that's part of the video. So I'm really excited to cool. see. I don't know how I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna make a shorter version for the Huntstock Film Festival. Nice. But I don't know how I enter that. I need to talk to Pat Guy yet, but 
We'll see. I don't think I'll win by any means because there's a lot more like big companies in the yeah a lot of production value like <laughs> behind some of that. Yeah. Well, hey, um, I think you know sometimes it's not just about getting that big ticket or placing first, second, third. I think oh. just the fact that it's going to be showed there um, says a lot. So, all right, everyone, Kyle Bentall. KBB Outdoors 2.0 on the YouTube, um, Bows, Bros, and Bucks podcast. Check them out. Um, Kyle, thanks again, buddy. Thank you for having me.